What's going on guys, Spencer Clay is here. And today's video is how to start a home service business that does $2,000 to $5,000 plus per week. You know, finally quit your job, make money in college, or just make extra money, do whatever the hell you want. So without further ado, let us move on. So as the kids say in my comments, cap, or is it? So this is Sean, you know, $500 sale, um, you know, or my face is in the way, $1,500 on the day. This is Sierra. She does boat detailing, nine hundred bucks plus one hundred fifty dollars tip. Kyle does window cleaning, two hundred two thousand two hundred fifty dollars um, in a day. And then Jake doing car detailing as well, three thousand three hundred seventy five dollars a week. So yeah, those are just some examples of the people in the inner circle, and that is what's going on. So this all stems from you know one simple blueprint. Finding an in-demand service, making two hundred to a thousand dollars plus per job, dialing in your marketing, and turning one dollar into two dollars. So I'm going to explain all these little concepts. Um, so we're going to start off with a quick example. So this all comes from leverage. So if you look at this, this is you right now. This was me when I had a job, even just three or four years ago. I was working at an ice rink, making twelve dollars an hour, and so I was working like three or four shifts per week. You know, three or four, like they were like four hours each. So I was making like. $400 a paycheck. And now being able to do a job that's $400 and make that and do that in like 30 minutes or an hour or even two or three hours it doesn't really matter. Um, like your leverage, you're literally just a little hamster, a little rat on the wheel, a tiny little wheel. But you with a business is that big ass Ferris wheel, you know, with the one little teenager operating it. But because he has so much more leverage, it's moving around because he's making I mean, obviously not the kid in the, the example, but once you build a bigger Ferris wheel. So this kind of goes back to a quote from like Warren Buffett. It's not how hard you're rowing. It's what boat are you in? So are you in a tiny little dinghy just rowing along as hard as you can? Cause like you could be the hardest worker at your company. You could be make, but if you're only making 10, 20 bucks an hour or even 30 bucks an hour, like how much are you going to actually be able to make? Cause I, I did some math yesterday too. I'm just like, I mean, cause I've, I've been there guys. I've worked at pretty much every shitty job and it's just like still blows me away when I'm making, you know, eight times what I used to make. And it all comes from just more leverage. So let's put this back in slideshow mode. And so to start off, like if you, if you're brand new and you're watching this, you know, great. If you, if you're already having an established business, you know, there'll be some more stuff for you later at the end or just, you know, a little bit later on in this training. But the key, all this comes from is finding an in-demand service because I have a lot of videos up on the internet, obviously, and people will be like, oh, I'm trying to do roof cleaning in my area. I'm trying to do this, this and that, and it's just not working. And my first question is always like, well, is there a demand in your market? What is the supply demand in your exact city? Because even here and even where I live on the West Coast, like there's cities that are a little bit further away, like just a few hours away, where the service that I do isn't as good. You know, people are doing different things. So it really comes down to nailing what exactly people in your specific city want, because, you know, there's fucking what, 360 million people in America, all of them want different things. If you're in Seattle versus San Diego versus Portland, Maine versus Boca Raton, Florida, it's different things. So the the way I usually go about finding an in-demand service, this is if I'm like, obviously not in my city where I'm like doing this for someone in the group or we're, we're figuring this out is the first thing I would do is I would just go to Craigslist. I would go to Craigslist. I would go to the services part. And I would just kind of see what other people are offering. And I want to keep keep an eye out for things that are popping up somewhat often, but not too much. And we'll talk about this in a second. But like an example um, um, would be like, here, I'll just skip ahead to this slide right here. So some of the services that I would avoid, at least in my city, this may not be true for yours. So absolutely don't take this, um, excuse me, at face value. But here, like moving, plumbing, maid service, junk calling painting, all of these have a typically very low hourly rate, at least where I live. I know personally, some guys that were doing moving and some other stuff where they were just like, they're looking at me, they, they actually switched to the business that I do. They're doing roof cleaning. Now they were doing moving. And it was just, you know, like at most you're making like 50 bucks an hour because you just have some other guy and, or like, or like junk calling. You just have some other like crackhead with a truck and he's just going to do, he's willing to do it for 20 bucks and a beer. So you want to avoid like industries like that. So obviously you want to, you know, pick your service very well. Um, and the, one of the best ways you can do this is what I did when I first started is because I, I went out and was doing driveway cleaning because I heard some guy was, you know, making 900 bucks a day doing driveways. So I went out, started doing driveways as well, knocking doors and it was working. It was working all right. 
But I kept getting asked, you know, do you do roofs? Do you do roofs? Do you do roofs? And eventually I was just like, fuck it. Yeah, let's go. So um, like I told the story before, but, you know, I was Googling, like YouTubing how to do the roof, like on the way to the job because I didn't know how to do a roof. But um, anything is figure outable. We'll talk a little about more of that later. But um, I need some more caffeine. One sec. So the, and this this just stems from like, you know, Eugene Schwartz, Gary Halbert. This is just basic business 101. Like if you do not have the demand dialed in, then you're going to have a shitty time with business. But, but if you have the demand like dialed in really well, it's just going to be so easy. Like the service that you provide, it, it's just completely dependent on where you're at. So like the mass desire must already be there, must already exist. You cannot create it. You cannot fight it, but you can and must direct it, channel it, focus it onto a particular product. And you know, the only advantage I want is a starving crowd. So this is just try and drive this into your guys' head. This is super important. Um, and then like going back to the ad story. So when I was doing, uh, then when I went to do those roof jobs, um, so I basically was like, okay, pressure washing is kind of like mid, but roof cleaning seemed to be working. So I ran a campaign on Facebook, an ad campaign with four different services. I did like a roof cleaning ad or a roof and gutter cleaning ad, house washing, pressure washing. And then like one more, it might've been like fence cleaning or something like that, but four different services. And obviously, um, the roof and gutter cleaning one just popped off and the rest is history. That's kind of the, the route I went down. So I would suggest that same thing for you. So if, if you're between like four services, we have this amazing thing called the internet where you can just put an ad out. And like, this is a good example would be like, I think Tim Ferriss did this with his book. He had like four different titles for the four hour work week. The four hour work week wasn't the original title of his book. It was something else. I can't remember, but um, he, t he put, he, um, he got up a Google ads account. He tested like however many headlines or however many titles for his book. And the one that got the most clicks is one he went with. So just simple examples of just, you know, being smart, using technology that we have and really knowing your market too. So talking to your people, like if you are going door to door, um, just like, I'll just sometimes just bullshit with the, with the customer. I'll be like, Hey, so how's everything going? Like, so you guys, we, if I, let's say I, maybe I did the roof or I didn't, um, do you guys get your landscaping done? Do you guys have your, how, how when was the last time you had your roof clean? Do you, how often do you get your gutters clean? You know, just talk to them. People will tell you a lot. They'll be like, Oh Yeah. You know, I'm having trouble finding a landscaping guy or one lady was like, yeah, we, there's only one pool cleaning guy in this whole area. Like I have a lot of hard, hard time finding a pool cleaning guy. So you need to pay attention to stuff like that and then kind of really structure your business around what people need. So very simple. Um, let's move on. So some examples of services that do very well in this type of industry in like this type of like making this type of amount of money is it's kind of a fine line between super easy to do versus like super commercialized. And what I mean by that is like, a lot of these things like pressure washing, roof cleaning, car boat detailing, solar panel, gutter cleaning, all this stuff, you don't really see like big industry, like big market leaders doing this type of work because it's a little bit more specialized and it's 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 a very fine line of profitability because obviously if it was extremely easy to do and profitable, like the big companies would come over and take it. That's, that's kind of where like you see like plumbing and like painting and stuff. Like plumbing is a good example of like just massive companies people that have that are making millions of dollars so everyone can kind of name in your market like who's the biggest plumber or even like if you could extrapolate this out to like roofing or something like everyone kind of knows that or like lawyer would be another example of like just they got a lot of money so it's gonna be a little bit harder to compete versus all these things are kind of just like they're in that that smaller they're in the middle category because the service is like um it's between 200 to a thousand bucks per job anything more than that it's gonna be a little bit hard obviously you know some of these, some of the work that I do, like we make more than that per job, but that's because I mean, I'm very good at what I do. Um, we have a solid business and I know exactly how to quote it, but you know, we're kind of in that middle profitability area. So it's a really good sweet spot. I like to call it the Goldilocks zone. So, um, so yeah, then, so that goes back to, you know, services that I would avoid anything with a low hourly rate. Cause I knew another, um, friend that was doing a cleaning service and I've seen people, I've seen all these businesses work. So don't get me wrong, but I, there's just example here. Um, someone was doing the maid service and they just had a huge problem trying to scale because every person was only willing to spend like 20 bucks an hour. Cause you can hire someone else for 20 bucks an hour to clean your house. And so it was just kind of like, that's where something you need a lot of scale to do. And like a lot of these things, you know, excessive supply, like everyone has like a junk hauling business out here. So I mean, go to, go to Craigslist. I mean, you'll see it. You'll see it moving, moving, moving junk hauling. So keep an eye out for that. Avoid those. And then on top of this, you know, quick little note. Don't be a geek about this stuff. Um, the, a lot of the things that we mentioned earlier, like roof cleaning, pressure washing, um, just, just just know your laws in your state, but don't obsess about this shit. Like when I first started, like there was a lot of stuff that 
I probably could have done better, but I mean, I literally just bought a pressure washer and started knocking doors. I wasn't worried about business licensing and insurance and stuff. Not saying that you should do that. Obviously, make sure you're licensed, bonded, insured, whatever you need in your state, do it legally. But like, I've seen some people, I've talked to some people, they're like, oh yeah, it's going to take eight weeks for the stuff, the paperwork to come in. And so I'll, I'm just going to wait for that. And it's just like, bro, don't be a geek. Just, just start, man. Um, but obviously this is not financial or legal advice. This is just what I've seen. Cause I've seen literally 18 year old guys just going out just fucking getting it done. And you know, when, and then another thing could be like taxes and stuff is even, in, even in my business, I mean, taxes are always going to be kind of annoying. So, but just, there's nothing you can do about it. You just got to pay your taxes. But the thing is you can do this crazy thing called just make more money. So if you're worried about taxes, just make more money. And that, that answer kind of just like boils down to a lot of things, you know, really doesn't matter what it is. Just make more money. So, um, and yeah, all that other stuff, decent plan executed violently today beats a perfect plan ex executed next week. That was general George S Patton it applies to war applies to business applies to anything. Don't plan too much about it. Just fucking get it done. So, um, then we kind of talked about this already. Um, so if we're, if we're looking to make, you know, 2000 to $5,000 a week, the math is pretty simple, right? So 200 bucks to a thousand dollars per job, you know, a thousand dollar jobs, you gotta do five of those a week. If you want to make five grand or, you know, $200 per job, if you're doing three of those a day, 600 bucks a day. So look for something you can do five to 10 jobs per week and potential for extreme hourly. So like all the businesses that I mentioned earlier, it's usually like, I don't even want to do a business that's less than a hundred bucks an hour. If I've, if I've done enough jobs where I can kind of see the hourly rate, I don't want to do anything less than a hundred because there's just so much shit you could do and make a lot more money than that. So I'm looking at things like low supply. So when you're on Craigslist and stuff, make sure you're looking and seeing, okay, there's, there's a few people doing this, but not too many. So that's kind of, you want to find that mark. So, and then remember the more work slash effort to start, the lower your competition is going to be. If someone just needs a pickup truck and they're just going to come to your house and pick up junk, it's pretty low barrier to entry. But if someone like a good example is like roof cleaning, where you, you need a truck, you need a ladder, you got to be able to get up on the roof, not be afraid of heights. Like there's a lot of different things that makes it a little bit harder for just anybody to go out and start. So that's something that I would be aware of. And so you're going to be able to make a lot more money doing that than you are going to be just, you know, picking up someone's freaking garbage at their house. So moving on. So the last step, and this is like another really one of the most important pieces is dialing in your marketing. We're going to spend some good time on this. So this is different for every service. Like, cause I, I've been thinking about this recently cause I've seen, you know, a lot of other guys, you know, on TikTok and stuff, they're doing door to door for like window cleaning. Um, and they're doing, or other bigger industries are doing like concrete, like they would be doing like Google ads or stuff versus I'm doing a lot of Facebook ads. So there's a, there's a lot of different things you can do. And it's, and what I kind of noticed is it really depends kind of on the numbers for your particular service. Window cleaning is a good example of like an impulse buy, you know, it's just like a, it's 150 bucks, 200 bucks for window clean. So it's much more of an impulsive decision versus like window cleaning or um, blah, blah, versus like roof cleaning or um, like boat detailing or something like something a little bit more niche where going door to door is going to be a little bit harder. You're not going to be able to find it. Facebook is a great way where you can kind of just find the needles in the haystack, have people coming to you. And the thing that I really love about Facebook and just running ads in general is your positioning is just so much different versus when you're going door to door. So door to door is great. Like, don't get me wrong. That's how I started. But nowadays I rarely go door to door. All my leads come to me. I have, I've really dialed in the numbers. Like I'm spending 20 bucks a day on Facebook ads and we're doing one, two, three jobs per day. So super simple. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second, but remember like when it went in doubt, you know, go door to door. But the next step I would start doing Facebook. And then after that, um, Google, we're going to talk about that in a second. So doing your research is really important. So with Google, I would want to keep your cost per click below five bucks. If you can find something that's below five bucks for your keyword, you know, for example, roof cleaning Seattle or pressure washing Houston, if the cost per click is above like five, 10 bucks, I wouldn't really fuck with it because for example, roof cleaning Seattle, the cost per click for Google is like 11 to like, it's like $15. Whereas for Facebook, I can get the, I can get a lead, like someone messaging me for five or 10 bucks. So that would be an example of something you wouldn't want to do. You wouldn't really want to run Google ads for that versus like if the job is a little bit more higher ticket and the cost per click is, you know, five, 10 bucks. Like for example, like ceramic coating might be a good keyword to target. Cause if, if the keyword is like, you know, less than five bucks or 10 bucks per click, but it's like a 9,000 or 900 to like $3,000 ceramic coating job. 
um, I pay attention to that. You know, maybe go down Google Google ads with that. So another thing you can do is you can do research with like Facebook ads. You can kind of go and see you go just type in Facebook ads library on Google and it'll pull up all the people running ads in your in your industry or whatever you want to type in. You could type in pressure washing, painting, car detailing. You can see every ad that other other people are running. And you know, obviously Craigslist again, see what other services people are doing. So doing your research, don't be lazy on this type of stuff. Um, just, you know, and then another thing with marketing that is just, just marketing one-on-one is just the idea of omnipresence. I want like being everywhere as much as you can. So ideally every person in the fucking, in your country or in your city knows your name back to omnipresence. So he who can spend the most to acquire a customer always wins. That is from Dan Kennedy. So it, at a basic level, it's like, you know, who can be the most places like kind of how we talked about earlier with the plumber, you know, those guys are, those guys are pretty good at the, the branding, you know, being big, like everywhere, like you have, they got the billboards and stuff. Our marketing needs to be a little bit different. Cause I like to do a little bit more direct response marketing where we have an offer and we have like a, ideally a deadline or something where it's, you know, a direct response offer. So a request for service, we'll talk a little bit more about offers in a second, but also, you know, educating the customer, perfectly describing their situation. So and something that I really like to do is I like to call out their pain point versus like call, trying to call out the exact person. I see, I saw an ad yesterday and I'm not, <laughs> not going to call anyone out, but it was a te- like, hello, Texas homeowners or attention, Texas homeowners. And I was just like, what a shitty headline. Like that is like, that it's like 20 million people right there. It's not inclusive at all. But if you're like, when was the last time you got your roof cleaned? Or do you have black, ugly streaks on your roof? Or calling out a specific pain point is so much better because obviously you want to you want to be somewhat exclusive, but like you don't want to try and include everyone, you know. So there's there's kind of that that balance you need to meet. So like perfectly describing the situation. So what is the thing that you are actually going to solve? Once you to kind of decide your service, what are you there to solve? So you know, the example could be boat detailing. When was the last time your boat was cleaned? Is your boat looking grimy? Um, I don't know, but something like that, you could just like describe what exactly that you were there to solve. And then, you know, as Robert Collier said, enter the conversation that's in the customer's mind. If someone's like, oh, dude, I need to clean my car. Or, oh, I need to get that boat done. You need to get your boat cleaned or need to do that. Like entering the conversation that's already going on. So that's kind of that idea. So running ads basics, $1 turn into $2. That's all you really need to know about marketing um, and running ads. So not really. I mean, that's, that's a very basic I mean, because you're multiplying money at the end of the day, you're spending $1 and making $2 back. If you can figure out how to do that, you should really be spending as much as you can. And kind of earlier, we mentioned, you know, lead generation versus request for sale. Lead generation is more like brand awareness and like educating your market versus like a request for sales. Like, hey, we got this cool offer. Let's go. So those are two types of like running ads you can do. I prefer to do the request for sale, like direct response, but the lead generation can work really well. Just in this in this kind of industry, I really just like you know a low ticket offer. It's a good example of what to do, and then so just knowing your market sophistication slash awareness level. This is also a Eugene Schwartz concept that he talks about in Breakthrough Advertising. You got to know where your where your market's at. If your market has never heard of, let's say you do something kind of niche, like a new one that's kind of popping off is like roof rejuvenation. Like some some people might not even know that you can just spray an oil onto your roof and it rejuvenates it. It like brings like adds five more years onto the life of the roof. So, or, or roof and gutters could be another thing where people might not even know that they need it done. So you got to kind of call out what they know. So you wouldn't want to be like, um, get your roof rejuvenated. People might not even know what that means. Like, versus like, did you know that you can add another five years onto your roof life? You know, kind of talk to them in the way that they, they want to be spoken to in the way that they understand. So, and then another concept is the interruption versus search marketing. We've discussed in other videos, like interruption is like Facebook versus search would be Google. So the thing that, that they're a little bit different is most people, like 97%, like 3% of people are going to be in the search category. Only 3% of your market is actively like searching for a solution for what you solve versus like the 97% are just, they're just, they're just existing. They don't even really know that you have the service and that you're offering it. So that's kind of why I like interruption marketing because it's 97% of your market. So you're just putting a Facebook ad, you know, they're on there watching you know, dog training videos on, on Facebook or funny cat videos. And then they see your ad, you got to interrupt them, you know, boom, versus like the search where you're trying to like, you know, Google, it's a lot more specific. So like, you know, roof cleaning Seattle or roof cleaning near me, you gotta 
it's it's just a different marketing. So I, I really like to prefer um, Facebook, like the interruption marketing for that reason. So a little bit about your offer. So once we've dialed in, okay, we're going to be doing Facebook ads, we're going to be doing Google, or we're going to be doing door to door. The most important part for direct response is your offer. Like if your offer is not rock solid, like perfect, then it's not going to work. So an example of Gary Halbert's story is there's a lady at the, imagine there's a lady at sitting at a bar. She's beautiful. And there's like a bunch of guys in the, in this bar with her. One guy goes up, he is jacked. You know, he's, he's like, oh yeah. So I bench 315. I can, you know, show you around. We'll go to the gym or something. And she kind of looks at him like, no. And so then the next guy comes up, he's like, I'm rich. I got a yacht. You want to come out on my yacht? Um, we can do all this sort of stuff. And she's like, no. And then the last guy comes up. He's kind of kind of a bum. And he just like looks kind of not disheveled, but he's just he's kind of a normal dude. And he says, Hey, I got some coke. You want to party? She's like, Cool. And so she goes with that guy. So it's really just like he happened to know that she wanted to do that. And um, obviously, don't do drugs, kids, but it's a good example of like really dialing in the offer because the other one there was one more offer in that story too i can't remember what it was but you know the you know what i'm saying you know it's offering exactly what the person wants so and then the, the other example miss universe um i'll tell that story another time but um or we'll, we'll talk about it later so the low ticket get them in the door so this is kind of the offers that i like to do and i like to have a very small like low threshold offer that gets people in the door and a lot of people will kind of argue with me on this because I'll run an ad for two ninety nine dollars roof clean, which is very cheap for a roof. But then people don't understand you can upsell like 60 to 75% of the people that walk in. And it's it's crazy. You know, my average ticket is like 400, 400 to 500 bucks. So by no means is it just 300 bucks. So, but a low ticket offer is something that people can grasp because I'll see people to this day, they're still running ads like get your car detailed today or get your car detailed by this Friday. And there's no like monetary amount. There's no like real reason to act now. So the person's just going to ignore it. Like most people are just going to ignore that. Like we want it to be like 199 inside, outside detailing ends this Friday. Only five spots left. We want to like almost scream it at them. We want it to be like, you need to act now. Like that needs to be your offer. And with that comes, you know, extreme knowledge of what your market needs and wants. If you know that people don't want this or they want this or that, that, that comes with a little bit of trial and error. You're going to kind of figure that out. And then like we mentioned a little bit earlier, like using their language. So if we're talking to homeowners, which is most of the people that we want, we don't want to, we want to talk to them where they're at. We don't want to use like, like the words that I used earlier, like cap or something. You don't want to use shit like that. You want to be very, you want to talk to the age of your audience. And a lot of people you're gonna, that you're going to be marketing to are, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. So you want to be very like use language that they're going to understand. So get your roof and gutters clean. This is going to protect your home, keep it safe and all that sort of stuff. So you want to kind of use their language. So. I mean, you could spend a lot of time trying to figure that out, but just, just be smart, you know, talk like a normal person and, um, examples, some offers that I've used. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but here's some basic offers, you know, that you could do. Um, like if you're down bad, you know, just, just have like a low ticket, like, um, $99 drive up clean. If I was like, if I had no money, like I would just go out, I would start beating doors down for yeah, $99 gutter clean. That's what I would do. And I'd probably be able to do several of those in a day, easily make a few hundred bucks if, if for some reason I had no money and my ads weren't working. So um, stuff that can work, we kind of talked about this, like a high ticket one, like $5.99. I've seen it work before, but it's just, it's just such a higher thing where people are just like, they're not, it's not like an impulse buy. So, and then another thing is, yeah, free quote, or if they're just, yeah, get your car detailed. Okay. Why? You know? or 10% off, you know, that's, that's not really compelling. That doesn't really like, we, we want to scream like, Hey, you need to get this now. Um, yeah, we want low threshold, easy to snag offers, move my face out of the way, whatever. Um, now it's right in the middle. Okay. So, and then lastly, kind of the copy framework. So this is, we kind of mentioned this, but you want to identify the problem, call out your target customer. You can screenshot this. I'm going to add this down below. So you guys can kind of um, copy and paste this into it, into your ads. And then I like to explain why and what they should be getting done. Hit them with the offer, explain your process in as much detail as possible. Hit them with your offer again, call to action, scarcity, optional right there. One more call to action and then one more scarcity. So at the base, I would always have scarcity at the end. So um, scarcity always works. Like we mentioned earlier, we want a fixed deadline if possible. Like I said, if I was down bad and I needed, needed 500 bucks today, 
I would have a, an offer that says, hey, we are doing this $200 roof and gutter clean. This offer is only valid for the next five people. It ends on July 31st. This offer will not last longer than that or something like that. And that would, that would work a lot better than just, hey, get your roof and gutters cleaned for 200 bucks. You know, you see the difference there. Um, fixed deadline. And, and this is hard to do as well. There's the slide, the next slide. Like, don't be lazy. I, and I don't mean being like actually lazy, but it's just like, even for me, myself, I don't want to work. I don't want to have to put up a new ad every three days because the offer expired, you know? So a lot of times I'll just be like, you know, this offer expires next week. It expires next Friday or something. So I'm going to be kind of specific or not, I'm going to be kind of general instead of specific, like a specific day. But like I'm saying, if you were down bad, if you really need to make it work, having a fixed deadline would be so much better. Um, but yeah. So other examples that people do lack of an offer, not compelling at all. They haven't tested it. So another example too, I, I've seen people running ads where they have the same headline for like all their ads, where if you look at my ads, you know, I got like six, seven, eight different ads running. All of them have a different headline. So I'm testing like eight different headlines, different videos, different pictures, testing all that sort of stuff. And you know, that's, that's what it takes. And then, you know, people know marketing awareness and marketing incest is another term that I like that Dan Kennedy's mentioned. It's, you know, copying other people when you, you see someone's ad and you just copy it. Well, what if that person didn't know what they were doing? It's like the blind leading the blind, you know? So you don't want to necessarily want to copy someone if you don't even know that their ad is working. And so it's, it's also just coming thinking to your thinking, thinking for yourself, like your business is your own you should be able to know kind of what decision is best, like what offer you need to be doing and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then I kind of skipped over this, but you know, obviously five spots left, um, higher conversion and subconscious. So this kind of penetrates a little bit deeper too. When you have this scarcity, cause I had a question in one of our inner circle group calls. Um, one of the coaching calls was like, Hey, uh, my closing rate is kind of a little low. How do you get such higher conversions? And I had, I could, I even kind of paused when I was thinking about answering this question because I have a pretty high close rate for my, for people that message me. And I was thinking about why that is. And it's because that I, I have like, Hey, five spots left or Hey, this offer ends next week. If you just say like, Hey, get your car detailed 200 bucks. People are just going to kind of sit on it mentally. They're going to, Oh, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to see maybe what I get, blah, blah, blah. But if they're like, Oh shit, this, this offer ends this week, they're going to be, they're going to be wanting to close very quickly. So that, that really like penetrates into their subconscious. They know they need to get it done. So you're going to have a much higher conversion rate. So hopefully that, that makes sense. And then kind of finishing up here, math, you know, I remember in school, I was not like, I did not even think that I was that good at math, but turns out you only need to do simple ass math to make shit work. So everything works, but something works best for your offer. This kind of goes back to the window cleaning. Are you doing door to door for that roof cleaning? Are you doing Facebook ads or, you know, bigger jobs are you doing, doing Google ads? So figure out what works for your market. If you're, if you don't know, uh, and you have zero and then kind of just going back to if you have no money uh, it's it's impossible to be broke and have money i mean it's impossible to be broke and have time you shouldn't be broke and have time so you either need to be spending time or money so door to door you're spending time facebook ads you're spending money so you got to pick one to pick one to spend um so scaling scaling what's working if, if door to door is working do more of that hire door to door people if facebook ads are working do more of that um pretty simple and then this, I know this is a lot of text, but I'm going to explain it really quick because um, I don't want this video to go too long. But so right now I'm spending 20 bucks a day on ads, right? $20 per day. We're doing one to two, sometimes three jobs per day. So if we're closing and if so 20 bucks, let's say our cost per lead is like $5, five to 10 bucks. So let's say it's, it's average $10 per lead. We're spending $20 a day. That's two leads a day. If we're closing one out of three leads, that's going to take, you know, a day and a half to get a job. But right now, um, my number is a little bit better because I'm like I said, I'm only spending $20 and we're doing quite a few jobs. Um, so my close rate is probably a little higher. But on the average, though, cost to acquire a customer, the CAC is 20 to 50 bucks, right? So if you're closing, if you're getting leads for 10 bucks, you're closing one out of three people, that's $30 cost per customer. And then if the average ticket is 400 bucks or adjust it to based on your market, um, 400 minus 50 bucks or $30, whatever it is, that's $350 profit. So would you spend 50 bucks if you know you can make 350 back? I hope you would. I know I would take that deal every single time. Um, so then lastly, guys, like with this business, it is yours. Like the thing that I love about home service is you can really just kind of make it your own. Do you want 10 trucks? 
and you want to take over your town, cool, you can do that. Do you want do you want to just run this on the side and kind of quit your job and start an online business? That's kind of what I chose. You know, obviously that's why I put up videos like this. I have my inner circle, my group and stuff, and I'm able to make good money doing that stuff. So I don't necessarily need to have 10 trucks. I don't really want to. So, but it, to each their own, you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, I know one of my friends, he just wants more time to lift. He he hated doing his other job and he just wanted more time to lift weights. Now he just, you know, does a couple a roof job a day. Three, three to four hours a day, and he has more time to do other things. So whatever you want to do. Um, so in summary, you know, to make $2,000 to $5,000 per week, except that it's not you that sucks. It's the boat you're rowing, build a new boat. So yeah, if, if you're making it, if you're working a job, you're making 600 bucks a week. Not necessarily you that sucks. You, you the hardest working person at your fucking company. But if you're only making 600 bucks for, for your salary per week, or even thousand bucks or whatever, it's not you. It, you need to build a new boat. So that's that's kind of what we're talking about here. So find the demand in your market. Find what people need done. Make sure you can make five hundred to a thousand bucks per day, doing you know two hundred dollars a job or a thousand bucks a job. Know your numbers. Implement that, and then let me know when you're ready to dial this in and join a network of other guys and gals doing the same. So obviously, you know, I have the my home service business mastermind inner circle, um, where we're we're talking about this stuff day in and day out. This is we eat this shit for breakfast and. No one is going to, and then lastly too, no one is going to believe in you until you do it. So I know a lot of you guys and me too, when we were started a little bit younger, you know, I got a lot of guys in the group too. They're 18, 19, 20, even 25 or to some extent. And you know, even if you're 30 and older, no one is going to believe in you like until you do it. And this really didn't, this didn't happen until recently. And I've been doing this business for almost four years. And only recently people are actually like, oh shoot, what you do is cool. Like, that's awesome, man. Whereas before it was like, you know, when are you going to get a job? Why are you like, you need to go to college, you need to do all this bullshit. But I mean, I mean, it's really up to you. I don't want to make this too woo woo motivational. But like, I've been there, man, like, I've done every shitty job, listened to my parents who in the end, were not where I wanted to be. If you don't want to be where your parents are at, like, don't do what they want. Don't do what they did. Like my in my dad's eyes for being a success was getting a government job. And just making a 1000 bucks a week and having a solid retirement plan. And you know, that just didn't, didn't work for me, man. And, and in today's day and age, I don't even know how you could survive off that little money. Like a thousand bucks a week is piss chump change. Even, even 2000 bucks a week is like bare minimum, like eight grand a month. Like that's like bare minimum to pay bills and shit. So I don't even know. But um, like we said earlier, making more money is going to fix all your problems. So um, college, yeah, obviously, you know, making more money than most of my professors. And then, so just lastly, do you want to be accepted? Or do you want to be exceptional? Exceptional, Because if you watch the end of this video, obviously you want to be exceptional. You want to build a business. You want to be free. You want to make more money. So, you know, again, um, let's go. If you want help building this and implementing this 7.5 times faster, fill out an application below and I look forward to chatting with you very soon. We have a limited number of spots and I plan on increasing the price very soon to join the inner circle. Because um, yeah, like I showed you at the beginning, people are making thousand two thousand bucks a day um or you know however much per week how much you want to make so it's really up to you guys i hope this provided some value and i'll see you guys in the next video let's go peace